Thank God that now we may embark on this study of the book of Deuteronomy. As was said yesterday, this book of Deuteronomy consists of five sermons and we shall be focusing on the first sermon today, taken from chapter 1 to 4. This sermon will cover Israel's history as a means of encouragement for them to press on as they enter into the land of Canaan. And chapter 1 verse 6 to chapter 3 shows the point of the sermon. And chapter 4, verses 1 to 40, is the application of the sermon. So 1 to 3 is the point, and chapter 4 is the application. And this is interesting to note because many sermons are also preached in this way. Uh, For example, Paul's epistles. The point is placed, the doctrine is placed before the application is placed as well. And we may see Moses turning to apply this sermon in verse 1 of chapter 4 with these words. Verse 1, uh, verse 1 of chapter 4, it says, Now therefore, hearken, O Israel, unto the statutes and the judgments which I teach you for to do them, that ye may live and go in and possess the land which the Lord God of your fathers giveth you. Now therefore, Hearken, that is the cry of Moses to the children of Israel. Do you want to live, O Israel? Therefore hearken to what I have to say. Know your history, that you may properly apply its truth to your own life. It is so often true that the time we sin is the time that we forget the goodness of God. We lie to ourselves and tell ourselves of how bad our situation is without considering firstly how good God has been to us. And in that moment of forgetfulness, lust is conceived and bringeth forth sin. And sin, when it is finished, bringeth forth death. Do not err, my beloved brethren. Be not as those who are tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrine. Be sound in the truth that God is faithful to us, His people. Let your anchor be firmly fixed upon the good and gracious Father of lights, in whom there is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. Let us observe now the light that He sheds upon us through the history of the Jews, that we may confidently hope in His goodness. Our first point, remember your history. Remember your history. The first part of the history traces from Mount Sinai or Mount Horeb all the way to Kadesh Barnea, where they failed to enter in. And this history is given for us in chapter 1. Having received God's command to journey from Sinai in verses 6 to 8, Moses prayed that God would provide judges in Israel so that his burden could be lightened. If we see from chapter 1 and verses 9 to 13. And I spake unto you at that time, saying, I am not able to bear you myself alone. The Lord your God hath multiplied you, and behold, ye are this day as the stars of heaven for multitude. The Lord God of your fathers make you a thousand times so many more as ye are, and bless you as he hath promised you. How can I myself alone bear your cumbrance and your burden and your strife? Take you, wise men, and understanding, and known among your tribes, and I will make them rulers over you. This was important for Moses, that he might be preserved along the way, through the wilderness. For how could he bear with two million people who are constant murmurers with just himself alone? Yet where are these leaders when they were about to enter into the promised land? Why did they not side with Moses at Kadesh Barnea? It is because they feared men more than they feared God. This we see from verse 26 to 40. 26 to 40. Notwithstanding, ye would not go up, but rebelled against the commandment of the Lord your God. And he murmured in your tents and said, Because the Lord hated us, he hath brought us forth out of the land of Egypt to deliver us into the hand of the Amorites, to destroy us. Whither shall we go up? Our brethren have discouraged our heart, saying, 
The people is greater and taller than we. The cities are great and walled up to heaven. And moreover, we have seen the sons of the Anakims there. Then I said unto you, Dread not, neither be afraid of them. The Lord your God which goeth before you, he shall fight for you, according to all that he did for you in Egypt, before your eyes, and in the wilderness, where thou hast seen how that the Lord thy God bare thee, as a man doth bear his son, in all the way that he went, until he came into this place. Yet in this thing, ye did not believe the Lord your God, who went in the way before you to search you out a place to pitch your tents in, in fire by night, to show you by what way ye should go, and in the cloud by day. And the Lord heard the voice of your words, and was wrath, and swear, saying, Surely there shall not one of these men of this evil generation see that good land, which I swear to give unto your fathers, save Caleb the son of Jephunneh, he shall see it. And to him will I give the land that he hath trodden upon, and to his children, because he hath wholly followed the Lord. Also the Lord was angry with me for your sake, saying, Thou also shalt not go in thither. But Joshua the son of Nun, which standeth before thee, he shall go in thither. Encourage him, for he shall cause Israel to inherit it. Moreover, your little ones, which ye said, should be a prey, and your children, which in that day had no knowledge between good and evil, they shall go in thither, and unto them will I give it, and they shall possess it. But as for you, turn you, and take your journey into the wilderness by the way of the Red Sea. Because you would not trust in my goodness, therefore I shall lead you away from the promised land which I have promised you. Because you fear the giant Anakims more than you fear me, therefore you will not enter into the land. Your children will enter into the land. Oh, how sobering these words must have been for that generation. The generation that saw all that God did in Egypt and through the wilderness, yet they forgot. They forgot how powerful God is to help them and carry them through into the promised land. And they turned against Him all that time. Please, you who are of the new generation, Moses is saying, don't be as your fathers. Trust in God who has provided for you your whole life. Remember this part of your history that you may not repeat the same mistakes as of old. Thus, in the next portion from chapter 2 and verses 1 to 23, God would purposefully lead the Israelites from Kadesh Barnea to traverse through the coast of their brethren. He would bring them along the coast of Edom, which belonged to Esau, and afterwards the coast of Moab and Ammon, which belonged to Lot. Why does God do so? It was to show the Israelites that he had, as he had brought Esau and Lot to possess their own lands, so he would bring Israel into their land, despite the great Anakims who lived therein. The previous possessors of Esau's land and Lot's land also had giants, just like the Anakims. If we see chapter 2 and verses 9 to 11. Chapter 2 and verses 9 to 11. As Israel passed by the land of Moab, the Lord says to them, And the Lord said unto me, Distress not the Moabites, neither contend with them in battle. For I will not give thee of their land for possession, because I have given our unto the children of Lot for possession. The Imims dwelt there in times past, a people great and many and tall, as the Anakims, which also were accounted giants as the Anakims. But the Moabites called them Imims. The Horims also dwelt in Seir before time, but the children of Israel succeeded them when they had destroyed them from before them and dwelt in their stead as Israel did unto the land of his possession, which the Lord gave unto them. And down to verse 19, 19 to 23. And when thou comest nigh over against the children of Ammon, distress them not, nor meddle with them. For I will not give thee of the land of the children of Ammon any possession, 
because I have given it unto the children of Lot for a possession. That also was accounted a land of giants. Giants dwelt therein in old time, and the Ammonites called them Zamzumims, a people great and many and tall as the Anakims. But the Lord destroyed them before them, and they succeeded them and dwelt in their state, as he did to the children of Israel, Esau, which dwelt in Seir, when he destroyed the Horims from before them, and they succeeded them and dwelt in their state, even unto this day. And the Avims, which dwelt in Hazarim, even unto Azar, the Kephtorims, which came forth out of Kephtor, destroyed them and dwelt in their stead. Do you not see, O Israel? Were not the Amims, the Zemzumims, the Horims, the Avims, the Kephtorims, just like the Anakims? But where are they now? They are all destroyed. I gave them over to Esau. I gave them over to Lot. And shall not I give the Anakims over to you? Don't be afraid, O Israel. Therefore, from chapter 2, verse 24 to chapter 3, verse 17, which is the third portion of this sermon, Moses calls them to remember the conquest that he had already wrought on their behalf against Sihon, king of Heshbon, and Og, king of Bashan. And it gave them their land to the Reubenites, to the Gadites, to the Manassites. So if we see chapter 3 and verses 1 to 7, chapter 3 and verses 1 to 7. Then we turned and went up the way to Bashan, and Og the king of Bashan came out against us, he and all his people, to battle at Edre. And the Lord said unto me, Fear him not, for I will deliver him and all his people and his land into thy hand. And thou shalt do unto him as thou didst unto Sihon, king of the Amorites, which dwelt at Heshbon. So the Lord our God delivered into our hands Og also, the king of Bashan, and all his people. And we smote him until none was left to him remaining. And we took all his cities at that time. There was not a city which we took not from them. Three score cities, all the region of Agob, the kingdom of Og and Bashan. All these cities were fenced with high walls, gates, and bars, beside unwalled towns a great many. And we utterly destroyed them as we did unto Sihon king of Heshbon, utterly destroying the men, women, and children of every city. But all the cattle and the spoil of the cities we took for prey to ourselves. Why is this account, especially of Og king of Bashan, important? It was because Og was a giant. Og was a giant, as we see in verse 11. Verse 11. For only Og, king of Bashan, remained of the remnant of giants. Behold, his bedstead was a bedstead of iron. Is it not in Rabath of the children of Ammon? Nine cubits was the length thereof, and four cubits the breadth of it, after the cubit of a man. To put this in comparison with our modern beds, the king size bed is about 2 meters long and 1.9 meters wide, 2.2 meters by 1.9 wide. But Og, king of Bashan, his bed is about 4.1 meters long and 1.8 wide. Even a king size bed is only half of what Og, king of Bashan, slept on. This man is a giant, and O Israel, if God had led you to defeat such a giant and to take over his land, 60 cities that are walled and high, shall he not aid you in taking over the Anakims and taking over their lands? And I, Moses, though I wanted to enter into this promised land with you, yet God forbade me for your sakes that you might not put your hope in me or in Joshua, but that you would put your hope in God, who never fails you. This is what is said in verse 21 to 22. And I commanded Joshua at that time, saying, Thine eyes have seen all that the Lord your God have done unto these two kings. So shall the Lord do unto all the kingdoms whither thou 
passes. Ye shall not fear them, for the Lord your God, He shall fight for you. And with this, we go to our second point, obey, for God is good. Obey, for God is good. Therefore, O Israel, you have seen fully and clearly that God is with you. Therefore, please keep God's commands in all its fullness and don't rebel against Him anymore. And this is for your own good. This we see in verses 1 to 8 in the application in chapter 4. Verses 1 to 8. Now therefore hearken, O Israel, unto the statutes and unto the judgments which I teach you, for to do them, that ye may live, and go in and possess the land which the Lord God of your fathers giveth you. Ye shall not add unto the word which I command you, neither shall ye diminish aught from it, that ye may keep the commandments of the Lord your God which I command you. Your eyes have seen what the Lord did because of Baal Peor. For all the men that followed Baal Peor, the Lord thy God have destroyed them from among you. But ye that did cleave unto the Lord your God are alive every one of you this day. Behold, I have taught you statutes and judgments, even as the Lord my God commanded me, that ye should do so in the land whither ye go to possess it. Keep therefore and do them, for this is your wisdom and your understanding in the sight of the nations. We shall hear of these statutes and say, Surely this great nation is a wise and understanding people. For what nation is there so great, who have God so nigh unto them, as the Lord our God is in all things that we call upon Him for? And what nation is there so great, that have statutes and judgments so righteous as all this law, which I set before you this day? Has any nation been so blessed as you, O Israel? Has any people been so great as you, O church? Therefore don't have any other gods before me, for I have made a covenant with you only. This is what is said in verse 9. Only take heed to thyself and keep thy soul diligently, lest thou forget the things which thine eyes have seen, and lest they depart from thy heart all the days of thy life. But teach them thy sons and thy sons' sons, especially the day that thou stoodest before the Lord thy God in Horeb, which is the covenant. When the Lord said unto me, Gather me the people together, and I'll make them hear my words, that they may learn to fear me all the days that they shall live upon the earth, and that they may teach their children. And in verse 13, And he declared unto you his covenant, which he commanded you to perform, even ten commandments, and he wrote them upon two tables of stone. Don't forget the ten commandments, which is your life. Don't forget the covenant which God has given you. For even when you have sinned, even when He has chased you out of the land in the future, He will turn to you again when you come in repentance to seek Him with all thy heart and soul. This is from verse 27 to 31, the portion we read earlier. And the Lord shall scatter you among the nations, and ye shall be left few in number among the heathen whither the Lord shall lead you. And there you shall serve gods, the work of men's hands, wood and stone, which neither see nor hear nor eat nor smell. But if from thence thou shalt seek the Lord thy God, thou shalt find him. If thou seek him with all thy heart and with all thy soul, when thou art in tribulation and all these things are come upon thee, even in the latter days, if thou turn to the Lord thy God and shall be obedient unto his voice, for the Lord thy God is a merciful God. He will not forsake thee, neither destroy thee, nor forsake the covenant of thy fathers which he swear unto them. Oh, what a comfort this is. God will not forsake you, O Israel. He has not forsaken you in the past as you travelled through the wilderness. He will not forsake you when you enter into the promised land. He will not forsake you when you are scattered from the promised land. How can God be so good to a nation that keeps forsaking Him? How can God be faithful to such an unfaithful people? The answer is this, because He loves them. 
This is from verse 32 to 40, the end of the sermon. For us now of the days that are past, which were before thee, since the day that God created man upon the earth, and asked from the one side of heaven unto the other, whether there have been any such thing as this great thing is, or have been heard like it. Did ever people hear the voice of God speaking out of the midst of the fire, as thou hast heard and lived? Or have God essayed to go and take him a nation from the midst of another nation by temptations, by signs, and by wonders, and by war, and by a mighty hand, and by a stretched out arm, and by great terrors, according to all that the Lord your God did for you in Egypt before your eyes? Until thee it was shewed, showed that thou mightest know that the Lord, he is God. There is none else beside him. Out of heaven he made thee to hear his voice, that he might instruct thee. And upon earth he showed thee, showed thee his great fire, and thou heardest his words out of the midst of the fire. And because he loved thy fathers, therefore he chose their seed after them, and brought thee out in his sight with his mighty power out of Egypt, to drive out nations from before thee, greater and mightier than thou art, to bring thee in, to give thee their land for an inheritance as it is this day. Know therefore this day, and consider it in thine heart, that the Lord, He is God, in heaven above, and upon the earth beneath, there is none else. Thou shalt keep therefore His statutes and His commandments, which I command thee this day, that it may go well with thee, and with thy children after thee, and that thou mayest prolong thy days upon the earth, which the Lord thy God giveth thee forever. Is there a nation loved like you, O Israel? Is there a nation who has the true and living God so near and close to you? Is there a people loved like you, O church? A church that has the Lord Jesus Christ, the King of heaven, the King of glory, who has died in our place. He loves us. The God who created all mankind loves us. The one who created the heavens and the earth, the one who created all things in this universe, not because of anything in us, not because we are obedient, for we have been rebellious our whole lives. The reason why He loves us is because He chose to do so. He chose to do so because He is good. He is merciful. Therefore, don't be slack, O Israel. Don't forget what He has done for you all throughout your life. Obey Him and teach your children to obey Him as well. For this is your life. This is your rest. And this is your peace. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, we have seen through history, how good Thou art to us. Thy mercy never changes, Thy covenant never fails. And we are fully thankful unto Thee for leading us all our lives long. Would Thou keep us from fearing the Anakims more than Thee? Help us to press on in Thy strength, by Thy power, for Thy glory, knowing that Thou hast chosen to love us and will continue to do so even unto all eternity. Grant us courage and joy and thankfulness to obey Thee this day for Thy glory. In Jesus' name we give thanks and pray. Amen.